because the last couple of days have been pretty crazy, but I wanted to share with you guys some new stuff today. So I know um, I have seen as I've been checking in with friends and been on social media, a lot of people are worried about finances right now, which is totally understandable. Um, lots of people might be out of a job or trying to save money in case they are out of one. And it's just stressful and weird times here all around. So. I wanted to give you guys a few creative inspirations on how you can have fun with your dog and tire them out in appropriate ways without having to spend any money. So as you guys know, we are really, really big on uh, food enrichment, mental enrichment. You know, our dogs have to eat every single day at least twice, sometimes three, sometimes four times a day. And so it's a really easy time in their normal routine where you can change things up just a bit to help give them some opportunities to use their nose, uh, to give them some opportunities to help them problem solve. Um, and those are really important things for our dogs to be able to do. It helps kind of break up the monotony of the day if we're home working with them all the time. Um, and it's a really nice way to, again, just help tire them out. So for me right now, you know, my dogs are double coated. It's getting warmer outside already. Um, and with all the people outside at different times of day, it limits when we can and can't go out. Um, so enrichment, mental enrichment through food puzzles and creative feeding is just one way that I can help give them appropriate outlets for that energy, which means that I'm gonna see a lot less attention seeking behavior um, and a lot less stress from them from being cooped up. So we're gonna go over lots of ways today that you can use some creative enrichment without spending any money. So a lot of these things are things that you're gonna have at home and we're gonna talk about ways to make each puzzle more challenging. So if your dog is a beginner level, we've got that foundation for them. And if your dog is a little bit more advanced at solving puzzles, we'll talk about some few ways that you can make each exercise a little bit more challenging for them as they grow. All right, so the very first thing that we are going to talk about, oh, hi Alexis. I'm excited to have you here too. So for Rue, you're gonna need to do those more advanced ones because she's She's a smart cookie. So the first thing that we're gonna do, you'll need a towel for. Um, you can use a beach towel, you can use a bath towel, the bigger the better, and you can create a snuffle mat. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna grab some treats here. Um, you can totally do this with your dog's food. Um, you can also do this with high value treats, so it's up to you on how you wanna do this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the towel up a little bit and I'm gonna kind of scatter the food around it. And again, quantity is up to you based on how experienced your dog is with it. And you can fold the corners of it in. And then I'm gonna do another layer of sprinkling food. And with this layer, I'm gonna scrunch it in so that that first top layer is a little bit easier for them to work through. And they'll start to smell those pieces that you've hidden underneath so that they'll have to lift those flaps up and open it up. And so this is creating uh, your own version of a snuffle mat or one of those buster mats where they have to lift pieces and forage and use their nose. And this is a really good exercise for dogs to get them to use a different sense, you know, so if your dog really likes sniffing outside, this is a really good one to do. The other thing you can do with this, so we'll open this back up again. I'm going to scatter the food all over it, and then I'm going to fold each edge in, and then I'm gonna roll it. And as I roll it, I am going to scatter more pieces in. All right, so we'll do a couple layers of that, and then I'd give it to my dog as a roll. And so what they'll do is they'll approach from the side, they'll have to unroll it this way, getting treats as they go, and then once it's completely open, there's more opportunities in these flaps here for them to continue working that puzzle. So depending on how you fold this, depending on how you roll it, there really are lots of opportunities to make this more challenging. Now, if your dog is wicked smart, you can do the same activity using hand towels instead of bath towels, and then grab an empty laundry basket and take a bunch of these hand towels, smaller than the bath mat, and fill that basket up. And so they'll have to pull those hand towels out of here and forage through this basket, okay? So that's just one idea using either a beach towel or um, some hand towels. Now, the next type of snuffle and foraging activity, you'll need some small pieces of fabric. 
So if you have an old towel that you want to cut up or maybe an old t-shirt you were just going to, you know, get rid of, throw in the trash, bring to Goodwill, you could cut that into small pieces. If you're a crafter and have extra pieces of, you know, quilting fabric, you could certainly use that as well. I'm just using dish rags. So these are rags that I'll use for cleaning. And as you can see, they actually haven't been used yet. They're brand new. But you'll want something about this size, something that's pretty small. And we're going to do something really similar to what we did with that towel. Let me move you guys down here so that you can see. So what I'm going to do is I would take one or two pieces of treats, or if you're using kibble or their diet, you could do more. And I'm going to roll these pieces all the way up. And we're going to do a couple of them here. So I'm going to put a couple pieces in and roll it up. And then we'll do one more here and roll it up. So you could certainly do as many of these as you wanted. If your dog uh, is not as food motivated, then I would recommend using high value treats for this. And what you can do, you can roll a number of them up and kind of stack them on top of each other like this on the ground. If you are trying to get your dog a little more comfortable in the crate, you could do something like this, but put it inside the crate. Another option for variation is grab a shoe box, or even if you're getting some Amazon shipments, you could use one of those boxes. And we're gonna take these rolled up uh, towels and put them inside the basket. So they have to pick it out of the container and then unroll it to find that food. So again, increasing the number of rolls we do makes it harder, and then increasing, uh, I'm sorry, changing where we put those rolls will also make it more challenging. So this is something that you could certainly have a lot of variation with. All right, so let's put these away. My dogs are certainly going to be excited to get some enrichment after this. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is scatter feeding. So this is something that you don't need any props for. Um, you're going to take their food and you literally dump it on the ground. So I would take it and do that. And if it's scattered on the ground like that, it takes them a while to forage around and find each of those pieces. Um, you can do it outside if you didn't want the mess on your ground. Um, you could also do it inside their kennel or crate. So if you're trying to condition, you know, a certain place in your house as being a good space for them to be, maybe, you know, you have a laundry room with a baby gate set up and want to get them more comfortable with that space, you can scatter feed inside that area. So it helps condition that place as being a positive place for them. And it's going to take them longer to find those pieces of food. Again, slowing down the eating process, improving digestion, and working that brain. You could also scatter feed inside a box, a shoe box, um, an Amazon box. If you had uh, an empty laundry basket, you could also scatter feed inside that. So again, lots of opportunities for variation, but scatter feeding is one of those activities that's really gonna work that nose and, and kind of change up that puzzle for them. Um, the other thing that you can do to make this harder for our more advanced puzzle finders, um, you can put things on top of it. So if I wanted to scatter feed in this box or inside a laundry basket, I'm going to sprinkle my food or my treats on the bottom, and then I can take a bunch of toys. Oops, <laughs> throwing toys around. I can take a bunch of these toys and just put them in on top of here. And so then the dog is either going to stick their nose in and move those toys around or they're going to stick their nose in and have to pull out each toy in order to get to the food on the bottom. And so that, again, is going to work the brain and the body, slowing them down and just giving them another new creative way to work for that food and work the brain out. All right, so let's get these pieces of food out of here. Moving on to our next DIY puzzle with things that you have around your house. Um, one thing you could do outside would be to sprinkle the treats or sprinkle kibble inside a baby pool. So if you have a little plastic kiddie pool that you let your dog play in during the summer with water, clean it out, make sure it's dry, and you can scatter their food inside of it. So that's another one that you could do just plain scatter feeding. And then as they get really good at it, you could do scatter feeding with toys on top and even scatter feeding and fill it up with either empty water bottles or paper towel rolls 
or those uh, plastic balls. So a lot of people have, you know, those kiddie pools where the, you'll plunge into and it's full of balls, like a ball pit. Um, lots of people will put those in. And so you could actually scatter feed treats or food on the bottom and then put the balls on top. Now, remember that the more toys and stuff that you're adding into that pool or into your box, the harder the game gets. We always want the dog to be successful. We're not trying to, you know, frustrate them. So start at the easy level. If they do great, awesome. The next day, make it just a little harder, a little harder, a little harder. Okay. So moving on to our next one, toilet paper rolls. There's kind of a laughing joke going on right now about people <laughs> hoarding toilet paper, <laughs> but it's a practical thing that's around our house. So let's use these to make a puzzle for our dogs. If you have a little dog, like maybe a Chihuahua or a Lao Chin, you can actually put treats inside here, pinch the edges and roll them over. You could even do it for some big dogs, depending on how uh, intense they were with their food. But by rolling the edges over like this, you create a little pocket where the food is inside. I could do that with one or two and just leave them on the ground. I also could fill a couple of these up and put them inside a box like this, okay? Now, with just plain toilet paper rolls, what I can do is fill an entire box like this. So I obviously need to keep collecting. I don't have quite enough to fill the shoe box. But if I stack them up like this, I can then take a treat or two and drop them inside each little TP roll. And then again, they're having to figure out how to solve this puzzle. Your dog might just flip the whole thing over. They might try pulling these out. They might try crunching right through them. But again, that's kind of the fun of it is giving them an opportunity to kind of forage and play in a different way. So this would be probably a little bit more of an advanced puzzle um, for our, our big thinkers in the group. Um, we also have paper towel rolls laying around. So this would be something for sure. What I will do here, I'll put my hand on the bottom or even just put it on the counter and then drop a few pieces in. And it's certainly up to you how full you wanna make it. Put those treats in the middle. And then I'm gonna fold the edges over. And you can do it just once, I'm sorry, just once for an easy beginner level. And you can fold it twice for a more challenging puzzle. So dogs will approach this in a variety of ways. I've certainly seen one of mine open these and try to pull the food out. Um, another one of mine just shreds this to pieces. So obviously with all of these puzzles, we wanna monitor our dogs. This isn't something I would wanna just give them and leave them. Um, shredding is okay in my house because my dogs won't eat the pieces of cardboard that they shred. If you're worried or you know that your dog likes to eat things, then this might not be the best puzzle for them if they're gonna rip it and shred it. Um, but again, lots of opportunities depending on your dog. So if you know the kinds of things your dog does, again, if they like to shred things, um, just keep a close eye on them when you're, when you're doing this activity. Um, for a more advanced version, collect a few of these, and you certainly could get multiple uses out of them, but you could take a few of these and put them in a big box. And so there's a couple treats or their food spread into multiple paper towel rolls that are folded up and then you could fill a box with them. So they have to pull them out of the box and then unroll each individual piece. Looks like we've got some questions here. So I'm gonna pause for just a moment. Uh, Alexis is excited about this. That's awesome, we are too. Um, Anna says, Peyton will definitely find the cardboard tasty. Yep, so if you know that your dog is gonna like to shred it and eat it, few options for you. Either monitor them while they're practicing this and the moment you see a piece get shredded, pull it up. If you don't think you'll be able to get to the cardboard that easily, then maybe opt for one of our other puzzles. All right, so on to the next one. We've got a lot of them here for you guys today. If you are consuming beverages, in plastic containers. This is a really nice way to use these containers once more before they go in your recycle bin. Um, a lot of times dogs really like the crunch of these and there's actually toys um, that you stick water bottles inside of for them to crunch, which is super fun. Um, a couple things you can do. If it's something like a Gatorade or a Coke or something like that, make sure you really rinse it out and dry it well. If it's just a plain water bottle, 
let it air dry. One option is to take the cap and you see this little ring around it. I would recommend taking that off too, just so they don't eat that. And then with this water bottle, just dump treats inside. So either treats or their kibble and then just give it to them like that. They'll crunch on it. They might rip it up. They might swat it around the room. All of that would be acceptable. Obviously, again, watch them for plastic consumption. That's not something we want. Um, if you want to take a more um, durable bottle like this, I would put some treats inside and then tighten this up really good. And you can actually take a lighter and burn little holes in it. And then you're making a little puzzle with lots of holes around the outside. And as you give it to your dog, they'll roll it around and the treats will dispense out of the container as they roll it. Um, with that being said, whatever you want to put inside here, we want to make sure that the holes are large enough that the food can come out. So just make sure that if you're cutting holes into a thinner bottle or burning holes into a, a more dense bottle. Make sure that it's, uh, the holes are large enough the food can easily come out. Um, again, we don't want to create frustration. If your dog is more advanced, then the holes don't have to be huge because that's part of the fun, right? It makes it more challenging if um, the, the food doesn't come out quite as easy. But we do want to make sure that it can come out of there. Um, I think I'll, oh, here, I've got a question from Alexis or a comment. I think all of these will help Rue with her fear of new objects. Absolutely. These are fantastic ways to boost confidence with dogs because not only are we encouraging interaction with things, but they're earning reinforcement as they work through these puzzles. And so it's a really nice way to help socialize puppies, right? Pairing something new with something positive for them. And with older dogs that might be a little skittish or nervous of new things, teaching them that as they interact with it, it's, it's something positive and fun for them. Um, on that note, if you give it to your dog and they are interested, but not super motivated, remember that you can bring out your clicker and you can click and treat them for interacting with these puzzles. And the more you do that, the more they're going to go, huh, okay, this is a good thing. She likes when I do this. And so they'll get more and more interactive with that toy. So remember that you can always train creative enrichment as a behavior if your dog is not already naturally good at it on their own or even nervous about it. All right. Awesome point, Alexis. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're going to move on to our next one, um, which involves boxes. So we are, a lot of us are eating from home at the moment. Um, so we are going through cereal and pasta and macaronis. So save those boxes. And there's a few different things you can do with them. Um, one thing you can do is find a way to reclose the top of it. So I generally will rip part of this and then on the, so my tear is here on the back flap. I'm going to rip over here, put a handful of food in or treats, and then you can use those tears to reseal the box. Um, not super strong, right? But then they can smell the food inside and then you can give this to them for them to shred and rip open. The other thing that you can do is, I'm going to do this one now, um, you'll need some tape or something to seal one side of your box and then just take a pair of scissors. Be cautious when you do this, please. And I'm going to punch a hole and then twist my scissors around and you can see that it really easily created a hole here. So depending on how big I needed that, if my dog was a beginner, um, I could certainly take my scissors and cut that hole bigger, right? Remember, we want the food to be able to come out. And the more holes there are throughout your box, the easier it's going to be. So you could cut several holes all around the box. We're going to seal this end up. And you could give it to your dog and let them flip it around. Um, as they get better at it, make sure you're saving other boxes so that you can cut fewer holes into them because the fewer the holes, the more challenging that, that box game is going to be for them. All right. Um, on to large water bottles. 
Um, we generally keep these for when we go out and do dog sports or go for a long run um, or go mushing with the dogs. I like to have really big water containers. If you happen to have gallons of water or if you drink milk and you have a plastic milk jug, you can do the same thing that we talked about with the water bottles, just with a larger container. Um, so I could burn or cut holes in here all the way around, close this cap real tight, and they could flip it around. And as they flip this bottle around, it's gonna make a little bit of noise, not too much though. And then treats will be dispensed out of it. Um, you can also, before you cut holes in it, or even after, take the cap and all of these rings off so they don't eat those and choke. Um, and you can leave this end open as well, and that's gonna create one more hole for that food to come out, making it just a little bit easier for them. And these, a lot of these ones, depending on how your dog interacts with them, would certainly be multi-use. Okay, um, another one here. So. If you stuff Kongs frequently for your dogs, or if you have a jar of peanut butter lying around the house, you could certainly use this for enrichment as well. Um, remember that there is an ingredient in some, but not all brands of peanut butter called xylitol, which is toxic to dogs. So make sure that you take a look at the back of the container of your uh, ingredients list. Make sure it doesn't have any xylitol, it's an artificial sweetener. As long as it doesn't, then this is safe for your dog to play with. So what I actually do, once I get all the peanut butter I think I can get out of it, I'll just give them this jar to lick out all the peanut butter. You could also, especially if it's more empty, drop a handful of kibble or a handful of treats in there so that they're working it almost like a calm, right? We've got peanut butter in a container with some extra goodies inside. So that would be one more thing we could do with that. And then once it's completely empty, you could totally make a food puzzle out of this container, cutting or burning holes in the side of this plastic, um, letting them you know, flip this around and earn some kibble or some uh, treats out of this too. So lots of opportunities with this uh, peanut butter jar. We've got two of them in our pantry right now and I plan on saving them till we have one more. And then all three of my dogs could work on this at the same time. So it's just kind of a nice cheap thing that I can do where I already have this. It's not like I have to buy more. All righty, on to our next one. I'm gonna move this down for you guys so you can see this. Okay, so this is a silicone mold. Um, people sometimes use these to make ice cubes. You can also use it to make little mini cupcakes, which would be adorable. Um, People also will use these to make homemade dog treats. Muffin tray, real muffin tray. So we can use these two items in a few different ways. So one thing I could do would just be to scatter treats inside or food inside these trays. So that is level one. If I want to make it a little harder, there are several things we could do. One, you could pour a little bit of coconut oil, uh, pumpkin puree, unsweetened applesauce, peanut butter, water, uh, bone broth, beef broth, or even, um, oh, what was that? Oh, goat's milk. So any of those could be poured in here and you could leave them liquid and then they have to lick up that substance and then get the food out of it. Once they advance from that level, you could stick this whole thing in the freezer. So after you have a little bit of food and your liquid added, stick it in the freezer and let the whole thing freeze. Um, once you do that, I would recommend making a few of the um, slots easy again. So if I have put food in it like this, let's say I pour liquid in this, this side, and then I freeze it. Then I'm gonna put normal unfrozen on this side so that it's, it's almost like they can work the unfrozen and it warms them up and eases them into that, that completely frozen. And then again, that next level would be freezing the entire thing. You also could take this muffin tray, move this out of the way, and collect some toys from around the house. So if your dog likes to play tennis balls, you could certainly grab some of those. We have all kinds of weird little, <laughs> this is a beach ball that we play with the, on the shoreline. Um, we've got a nice, a nice stretchy ball here and I've got a Kong and a bone. So what you can do is you can take these toys and put them, 
down for you guys again. Um, use these and cover all of your holes. And so if we do this, then again, they have to remove the toys off the top of the puzzle in order to get the food underneath. Um, just like with everything, remember that the more holes that are covered with toys, the harder it is. So the first time you're transitioning to a toy like this, just be mindful about your dog's energy level and motivation to work. We want them to be successful. We want them to be able to get all the food out and we want them to work to the end of the puzzle. So if your dog is new to working puzzles, working activities like this, reduce the amount of food that they're eating out of them. Higher quality food and lower quantities will improve their ability to finish the puzzle. And that's what we want. We want them working to, to the end of the puzzle um, so that we're teaching them kind of motivation and endurance. And then as they get better, you can increase the quantity of food. You can vary the quality or high, how low or high value that food item is for them. And then of course we increase difficulty by changing up the uh, pieces of our puzzle. So we've got a few people that are posting here. So let me quick take a look at this. Um, Jordan says, 100% use the jar as a lazy Kong, and I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. So, you know, by by using this, it it's already stuffed for you. You don't even have to put anything in it. Um, and you could even get a few uses out of this. So when we do this with our dogs, you know, I'll show you here. We've, uh, there's quite a bit of peanut butter left in there, and you can actually see we've dropped some treats in there too. So I'll leave that amount in it and I'll give them, you know, 15, 20 minutes to work it. And then I trade them a high value cookie as I take this up and there's still a little bit left in it. So I can put some more treats in here, stick it in the fridge. And then I've got more than one use out of this. So lots of ways to reuse those. <laughs> Brittany says, Chelsea, your hair looks amazing. Thank you, Brittany. Um, Jordan says, that's a good idea to only freeze some. Yeah, because remember, our goal is to have lots of variation with this and lots of ways to change uh, the difficulty level. So we don't want to necessarily go from completely raw, we'll say, or completely fresh ingredients to 100% frozen because that could be a really big change for our dogs and that could make it really hard. Um, so we want to make sure that we're only making it a little bit more challenging at a time, which will also give us a longer period of time to change up these puzzles. So a few things we can do there. Um, and then the last thing that I want to talk about, bring out my basket again. Um, certainly, once our dog masters a variety of these, like our big towel roll and our little towel roll, and our water bottle and our paper towel roll and our pizza box or a pasta box, sorry, we could do a free for all. So you could certainly toss a variety of puzzles into one and just let them go crazy with it. Um, remember with enrichment, we want it to be fun. We want it to work the brain and body. Um, with a puzzle that is going to help them be interactive, let them move around a lot, like smacking around this bottle or smacking around this box, that is certainly going to burn more energy off. So those are puzzles that are good to do in the morning, you know, right away once they've been sleeping and they're ready, to, they're ready, they're jazzed, they want to go. Give them one of those puzzles that's going to increase that energy level and get them to burn that energy level off. If after working the puzzle, you have to immediately go to downtime. Remember that that can be hard for them. So you could give them something like a bully stick or a Kong after that to help bring that energy level back down. If I'm giving something, maybe let's say lunch, I've got a lunchtime break. I did my morning work, lunch, then I have some more afternoon work I have to do. And I want my dog to stay calm. Opt for something like this or for something like this that's going to promote a little bit lower energy, lower arousal level, because that is going to help your dog stay calm versus getting them really jazzed up and then you're left with a dog kind of in limbo or a dog that is like, we just did all this fun stuff, how do I calm back down? So just remember that we wanna be mindful 
of our dog's energy levels, certainly using these to burn off that extra energy. But remember that whatever energy level these puzzles are promoting, that is more likely to be the energy level that your dog has immediately afterwards, unless you do some sort of interim behavior for a short amount of time, like taking him on leash and letting him walk outside and sniff for just a minute, go potty, maybe even giving them a calm, something that's gonna reduce that energy level again. All right, so let me flip through here, just make sure there's nothing else I missed. Um, so I'm going to challenge everybody watching this. Over the next week, I wanna see some of your ideas. So if you are going to work on anything that we did in this video, or even if you've thought of a new creative twist to it, I'd love to see it. So if you're posting on Instagram, you can tag us at Positive Futures. If you are posting on Facebook, you could certainly post on your own page and tag us or even post in the comments of this video. We would love to see your creative ideas and it might give us more creative ideas that we can share with clients because that's the goal. We're all in this together. And we're probably going to be social distancing for a while. So we all want a way to feel connected with one another. And we also want ways to help tire our dogs out appropriately. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope that you can start collecting some items around your house, start saving some of those recyclables instead of just putting them right outside on the curb. And let's see if we can use all these tools to help promote some appropriate energy release from our dogs. All right, guys, thanks for joining me.